آله وصحبه من ولاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصيتنا أن عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we pray and we make dua to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their shuhada. Allahumma ameen. And be with them. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah al-alayhi al-azim. The only thing that we can do now is just the dua. And if you can donate for the humanitarian aid, please do your best. Jazakumullah khair. Ahlan marhaban bikum. Hayyakumullah. Today I will be dealing with, just to remind you, the last ayah we were dealing, we are in chapter al-Baqarah. We dealt with Yisalunak al khamri wal maysir, if you remember. The last one that we finished two weeks ago. They ask you about the alcoholic drinks, intoxicants, and we had a big idea about the concept of legislation in Islam. Who has the right to say this is right and this is wrong, if you remember. This is a huge issue. And we highlighted many things. Today, we will keep talking about how great this deen is through Ayah 220, which is أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في الدنيا والآخرة ويسألونك عن اليتامى قل إصلاح لهم خير وإن تخالطوهم فإخوانكم والله يعلم المفسد من المصلح ولو شاء الله لا أعنتكم إن الله عزيز حكيم The ayah says upon this world and the hereafter and they ask you O Prophet concerning orphans. So this ayah basically now is talking about orphans. You will be amazed when we highlight what I'm planning to highlight. Now simply orphans, oh nice, no. You will see how great this religion and how divine it is. It's the decision of Allah to, to put the priorities in this constitution so that people of power will not play their dirty games as we witness now, <laughs> okay? Who's controlling the world now in the human level? People of power, not necessarily people of the haqq <laughs> or the truth, no. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now, and they ask you, O Prophet, concerning orphans, say, improving their conditions is best. قُلْ إِصْلَاحٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ And if you partner with them, they are bonded with you in faith. فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ And Allah knows who intends harm and who intends good. Had Allah willed, He could have made it difficult for you. Surely Allah is almighty, all wise. Now, made it difficult for you by not allowing partnership between you and orphans. Look. Now, in the superficial level, the very quick level, this ayah is giving you uh, like an indication, like uh, highlighting the importance of taking care of orphans. صح? In a very simple, let's say, level. Taking care of orphans type. Now, orphans generally at that time, generally speaking, uh, no orphanage, no social security system, <laughs> No public government system to take care. Basically, any orphan was living with some group of relatives taking care of him or her. Are you with me? This is uh, the, the nature of the world. For, with the paternal uncle, maternal uncle, another family, extended family, with whatever, taking care of them. طيب, sometimes this orphan, he or she, could have money. As a wealth, inheritance wealth. He's still very young man or woman or a small child but he has money type now can you imagine if there is no system and the majority of the people on earth 
anyone has the power can do whatever he or she wants. Try to go back now. There is no registrations, no documentations, no courts, no law system, no policing, no documents, nothing at all. Who can preserve the right of the weak? Just take it in this way. You are living, you know, people on earth, generally speaking, as if they were living in a forest. True or false? To give you an idea, you know, I, I'm speaking intellectually to you, to you now. Just make a pause. One of the biggest accusations for Muhammad وسلم, by his enemies, the polytheists, the Muslims in Mecca, and later by the enemies of, you know, the people of Persia, the Romans, later Europeans, <laughs> okay, against Islam, Orientalists, one of the biggest, biggest things that used to attack him, that he's a liar and he's not a prophet, true or false type. Orientalists, which is the most influential people now, their studies on people nowadays, their biggest claim that Muhammad was a clever Arab desert man. He made a theft by having some of the information from the Torah and the Injil. And he composed, because he was so clever, something so that he will empower his people. Please, focus on this. The claim is what? He came to do what? To empower his people. Type his people, their base was fully dependent on that the strong will take the right of the weak. He came now to protect the weak. <laughs> Are you with me what I'm saying? Look now. You need sometimes this simple, simple, humble example could. Uh, Sheikh Anas, uh, can you please stop them? Zakallah khair. Thank you. You know, I'm an al wahidi shaif from al I can't stop my eyes. <laughs> Zakallah khair. Shukran. I'm a very visual person. By the way, I'm talking with you, but my eyes watching the kids. I'm not able to control them. I'm losing, I'm losing my concentration. Allah. What I was saying. Talking about the Prophet. Ah, supporting the weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about making partnership with them, which means they used in, in, uh, under the umbrella of taking care of their money, they used to seize their money, kick them out, which is because power, people of power, up, up to this moment now, what's happening now around the world now? Who's taking the decision? <laughs> the one who has the power. So I want to stop here. My point is not the orphans. My point when we speak about weak people, vulnerable people, people in need, people who has no rights, people who might be attacked and rights be lost, Islam came to establish big power by the Quran that those people must be protected. And what is more important than that for me in this session, to know this one of the evidences that this book is from a divine source. It's not from Muhammad. By the way, this is very important because once you prove the divinity of this book, the case is finished. Khalas. <laughs> Your job is done. Mission is accomplished. Da. That's it. In this context, let me remind, because I can tell at least 30% of you new faces, just to remind you very quickly, just for the sake of argument, in case if you were in need, very quickly. If someone asked you, can you prove to me, and you have a limited time, can you prove to me that this book is from Allah and not from Muhammad? Simply, simple logic, very quickly. Said, okay, you accuse Muhammad that he came. What is the accusation? An Arab, genius, he wanted to empower his own people, Tayyip, who was the biggest enemy for this man. <laughs> his own people. <laughs> Please say something, at least, that could make يعني, some kind of sense. You are you are accusing him, he came to empower him and up to the يعني, if, if we reached up to Al-Ahzab and Hunayn the biggest power who was trying to demolish, to finish to vanish him, his people how come, what, what kind of craziness of crime, but subhanallah, kufr what is the kufr, be careful I repeat, kufr is from the word ka var ka fa Ra is cover in English. Yani the English cover has been taken from kafara in Arabic. To cover. The original meaning is to cover. Okay? The example that I, for example, this is a key. Okay? I covered the key now. Now, I have the key with me, but I covered the key. I'm hiding the key. If you ask me, do you have the key? No. Do you have the key? No. Even though I'm holding the key, I'm sure that I know that I have the key and already I have the key and I'm completely certain that I have it, yet I'm denying the fact that I have it. I'm covering. So originally this is the original meaning of kufr, which is to hide, to cover. Then it was used as a rhetorical metaphor to talk about someone is denying, rejecting something even though he's sure from it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَحَّدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوَّةً They denied it superficially. No, 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 no. وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ Even though their own hearts from inside certain 100% that it's true. طيب, let's come back to now. They accused Muhammad Sallallahu that he came to empower his people and to support his people, even though 90% of his troubles was his own people. Tayyip. He came to empower his people. Show me the customs and the traditions and the laws that he supported them with. He came to demolish 99% of that what they were doing. Sahih <laughs> la. True or false? 99% of their traditions, he came opposing them. But how come he came to support them? Yani imagine, this is a false prophet, a liar, sallallahu alayhi wa as they claim. The basic minimum requirement, you come to what? To seek the acceptance, to amuse the people, to approve what they love, which is exactly what politicians are doing now. True or false? Now, generally speaking, in what's so-called modern world, what's so-called democratic countries, 
politicians, when they want to win in the election, to be presidents or prime ministers or ministers or whatever, do not they seek what people want or not? Even they, they believe in something else. Yani, biggest example, we Muslims, don't we receive many people who believe in many things else, but they come and they smile, say, Aslam alaikum, I wanted just to greet you, and I want blah, 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 even though they do many things against us, but they smile in our faces, in, in, on a, clearly on a hypocritical uh, base. But why? Because they don't want to lose our votes. <laughs> they need our support. <laughs> we are two million <laughs> votes. <laughs> so this is common sense. But how come you are accusing Muhammad that he came by his own, he composed, even though he was opposing, he was attacking, he was demolishing 99% of what his people used to do. Riba, they was doing against him. Drinking alcohol against them. The prostitution. They were forcing the slave girls to work in what we call now the industry of prostitution, literally. They used to have it. It's, very, by the way, very powerful, well, slavery and prostitution and alcohol, these three, they were one of the biggest industry, you know, income at that time. Alcohol, drinking, to a degree, if you don't know, Ahmad Habibi, Ahmad, Ahmad. ولا هو معانا ازيك يا يحيى خلاص هنمسحها بوش حبيبي هو هو سينج اه طيب هي واز اجينست بروستيتيوشن هي واز اجينست زنا ات واز فيري كومن باي ذا واي ويز ريجاردينج بوليجامي دو يو نو يو دونت نو ذات بوليجامي ان اريبي واز انليميتد do you know some of people they entered to Islam, he had with him 27 wives, some of them 90, do you know that? Unlimited, unlimited it was. Islam came and limited it with conditions of justice to four. It was unlimited, 15, 19, 20, 25, 30, 40. So, and they say he, he came to empower his people, how come? How come? There is this evidence. The other very powerful intellectual thing. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he loved Khadija radiallahu anha so much, and Aisha so much, and Fatima so much. How many surah about Aisha and Khadija and Fatima? How many times their names are mentioned? Not even once. Can you imagine? Logically, this is common sense. I'm giving you, the, I'm not discussing the balagh al-an, the rhetorical, style of the Quran. No, 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 no. I'm not discussing the scientific aspects of the Quran. I'm discussing the pure common sense now. An Arab man who is proud of the tribal mentality, he's completely engaged in a very, very beautiful relation with his wife, then his other wife and his daughter for 23 years after being a prophet and 15 years with Khadija before being a prophet. He did not mention Khadija, not even once. Not even a chapter in her name, or a verse, or mentioning, not even an indication in one word. Because it's not his decision. <laughs> yeah, please put yourself in his place. The book of Mahatma Gandhi, the book of Marx, the book of Lenin, the book of Hitler. Anyone from those in the human context, the famous, very powerful, influential people, when they compose a book, don't they mention their personal things, their beloved things, their own context? No. This is very important to know it. Like, on the contrary, one of the beautiful things. Now, in a few years, one of his biggest enemies, the Romans, true or false, Roman Empire. Tabuk was against who? Tabuk and Mu'ta. Tabuk and Mu'ta was against who? Romans. Type Romans technically or practically means what? Christians. Sahilullah. Christians or not? Can you imagine 
they were attacking him they were against him okay طيب on al Medina, one of his biggest enemy the Jews طيب how many verse we have talking in a very beautiful way about the prophets of Jews and Christians and a special chapter about the mother of God for Christians which is Maryam and praising her and defending her طب يعني common sense <laughs> this is your enemy <laughs> attacking you you are a liar as a machine you want to, to, to gather your people against your enemy on what common sense you mention a good information praising one of the most the second most important personality in the culture and of the, your enemy number one is Jesus Christ number two the mother of the God <laughs> Mary <laughs> special chapter in her name tens of ayats praising her طب, give me explanation give an explanation don't think now go then they are your enemies and you are composing your book and you want to gather your people against your enemy how come give me not logical explanation give me an explanation that could contain 1000% of logic can anyone by the way use, use the devil's advocate please strategy try to give me can you yet the orientalists they were so rude to claim this claim because it's what jahadu biha wa istiqnatha anfusuhum it's very clear it, it, it's amazing when you think when you think about it طيب. let me finish the last example <laughs> last example just for I'm just, I want just to empower you with these examples when we speak my point is not just the orphans my point is that talking about orphans in this context accusing Muhammad Sallallahu of composing the book is an, an amazing evidence one of the evidences that this book is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala now how many times Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned his direct enemies by their names in his book, composed book, the Quran? Yani, Fir'aun al Umma Abu Jahl. How many times he was mentioned in the Quran? How many times? Zero. Oh. Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Type the leaders of Kufr from all different sects. None, zero, 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 zero. Type. He came to support his tribe and his family, and the only name mentioned and being cursed is his uncle. <laughs> Abu Lahab. <laughs> his uncle. <laughs> In a tribal mentality, this is impossible. I want to empower my people. I should be supporting. You know, fanaticism? You know, the, 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 tri, you know, the tribal mentality indicates by default to protect your close family even if they are doing wrong. This is, this is tribalism. <laughs> the, the only person who was mentioned is his uncle. His un the, the brother of his direct father. Abu Lahab, tabbat yada Abu Lahab And none of his, all other enemies, they were mentioned by names. Allah. Yet he composed the book <laughs> and Muhammad was not a prophet. By the way, when someone asks you such questions, bring these simple common sense evidences. This is a common sense logical evidences. Tell him, forget who am I. Consider me nothing. I'm not a Muslim. Consider me an alien. Consider me a robot. Consider me an atheist. These are the Questions. When you answer them, start to criticize Islam. Or come and criticize me. If you can't answer them, I'm asking you, you have no choice but to accept Islam. Because it will be hujjah, by the way, you know? You know the concept of iqamat al hujjah in Islam, which means to establish the argument, which means to prove to you your feelings, your logic, your rational thinking, the power of your intellect, will be completely obsessed with the haqiqa, with the reality that Allah will show you. Not necessarily you and me will be aware that you witnessed, but you will be aware. And Allah will hold you accountable in the day of judgment. Ah, طبعا. 
By the way, in theory, in theory, in theory, for us, for us, maybe we think this person, oh, miskin, he does not know. In reality, is it necessary that he does not know? Yani in theory, in theory, if you ask me, is it true that every non-believer will go to the hellfire? I will tell you no. Because we don't know who's exactly the non-believer for sure. In theory, on paper, we say every non-believer will go to Jahannam. Type. Is this applicable on that person? If it is it applicable on X area location? I say, I can't generalize. I don't know because I don't know how many of them they are aware or not. But, but, can, uh, I, will now, I will change the question now. Can you be sure that every non-believer non is not aware that our faith is the truth? <laughs> can you? No. So this I'm telling them. Allah Allah will make sure to let you know, feel, be aware. I don't know the how. It's not my business. Allah is, by the way, Allah is using us. We are tools of Allah, by the way. By the way, the fact you are a colleague for a non-believer in your job, in your business, or studying at the high school with a non-believer, okay? Or doing you know, social media, something you don't know. Allah might be using you and me to bring the truth to someone. You don't know, we have no idea, but she and he knows. That's why we are witnessing with thousands of people who come to Islam. Type. By this, we finish this ayah, just to talk about the orphans and the weak people and how this book, the Quran, was supporting those people, take care of them. We have verse... 221 221 and I will highlight it inshallah I will I will see the message inside it then I will finish Qala wala here is a very sensitive Islamic teaching it has to do with getting married from non-believers. Okay? Allah says, literally, do not marry polytheistic women. Allah is addressing the men now. It's completely prohibited because, you know, in Islam, in Islam, a Muslim man is allowed to marry from a Muslimah, a Christian female, a Jewish female, with a condition that she's living in purity and chastity. Okay? Because the condition that they don't have the boyfriend and the, you know, these things, they don't commit the zina and these things. If she's, you know, it's called al muhsana This is the meaning of al muhsana even though their faith is not like us, yet Allah allowed the man on the base that the man should be the leader, should be the leader of the family. But now the modern world is changing this dramatically. I don't think this will stay anymore. But in case, if men stay men, okay. <coughs> Because liberalism <laughs> is planning to do something else. <laughs> well, like, if men stay men as Allah wanted, they are supposed to be the leaders of the household. On that, in this base, they are allowed, they are not forced, allowed in case if there is, you know, goodness to marry from a Christian and a Jewish, that's it. Apart from this, it's prohibited. And the marriage will be invalid. Yani, if a Muslim man decided to marry a Hindu or a Buddhist or atheist or general non-believer, his marriage contract is not valid and his relation will be committing fahisha. It's not valid except Muslim, Christian, and Jewish, okay? With the condition of chastity and purity. 
time. Now, in this ayah, Allah is specifying, do not marry polytheistic women until they believe. For a believing slave woman is better than a free polytheist, even though she may look pleasant to you. <laughs> Look at Allah. <laughs> Allah is, now, now this is an address for the men. Allah is telling them, you know, the concept of priorities in Islam, you might be pleased with the superficial appearance, which could be, yes, she might be queen of beauty. In Islamic consideration, she has no value. <laughs> but she's a queen of beauty. Who cares? If you are a believer. Okay, I admit with you, she is a queen of beauty. Who cares? But she's a queen of beauty. Who cares? <laughs> but why? Let's come to our own priorities, we as Muslims. In our priorities, Allah says, and do not marry your woman to polytheistic men until they believe. For a believing slave man is better than a free polytheist, even though he may look pleasant to you as well. The same thing, men and both. Type Why? They invite you to the fire. This is a metaphor. This is a rhetorical. Actually, no one is inviting you literally to the fire. Have, have you ever witnessed an unbeliever having, please come to fire, come to fire, come to fire, I will burn you, I will burn you, come. Have you witnessed this? But uh, seriously, I'm asking. Have you witnessed an unbeliever telling you, come, please, I want to bring you to the hellfire? No, actually, no, 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 at all. What does this mean? The end result of following their path will end you up to the hellfire. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, even though, so, they invite you to the fire while Allah invites you to paradise and forgiveness of his grace. He makes his revelations clear to the people, so perhaps they will be mindful. Which means, let, let's, let me use our modern terminology now. Okay? Modern term, terminology. You need to be close from someone who believes in your principles. <laughs> in your what? Principles. It, can you imagine? Let, let's use the political, political, democratic, liberal terminology. Have you heard about the Cold War? Do you know this terminology, Cold War? Who knows what do we mean by the Cold War? What, what, what did this terminology be being used? Yes. Yeah, Cold War, you know, after the, after the Second World War, the two biggest powers on earth, they were not Russia, it was Soviet Union, the United Soviet Union, or the United Soviet Social Republic, called, okay, USSR, which is now Russia. At that time, both of them, East and West, they had the ultimate biggest nuclear powers, okay? So they did not engage in a direct war, but they were in a continuous, they called Cold War. Yeah, they used to fight from underneath <laughs> the table. <laughs> you know, spying, you know, and uh, how to say, like, uh, you know, war by proxy. <laughs> For example, why United States wanted to control Vietnam? Because of communism of... Why United States helped South Korea against North Korea? Because of the war between Russians and Americans. Anyway, now let me go back to that time now to tell you how believing in a principle is something common sense. Like, imagine yourself, you are an American in 60s, 70s, 80s, proud American. You loved a Russian girl. You are high officer in the Marines. By law, are you allowed to marry a Russian girl? No. No? Why? They are not religious people, la samahallah. They are not religious people, but they not allow you. Why? Because she believes in 
communism. And communism is classified as an ideology which is an enemy for capitalism, democracy, democracy, liberalism. So they will not allow him to marry a Russian girl. Actually, if he did, he might be accused of being a spy. Subhanallah. You know why I'm telling you this? Because some people, they use all the time, they fall into the trap of inferiority complex. You know this terminology? In inferior, superior, inferior. Inferiority complex, uqdat al naqs. For example, if someone asks you, hey, are you a Muslim? Yes. Why in your religion you are not tolerant? Why you are not tolerant? Why in your religion you are not allowed to marry? Why you don't marry? Why you don't He said, hey, don't accept this. Be proud. He said, excuse me, do you have a problem with me or with the principal? He said, in the principal, okay, let me educate you. Sit, Habibi, sit. Sit. Oh God, oh God, Habibi. What's, what thing you follow? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> okay, you are what? Liberal, democratic, non-believer, atheist. <laughs> I will use examples from your own culture. Are you an atheist? But do you respect communism? Yes. Okay. What is the biggest communist party on earth now? What is it? China. China. Millions of Chinese. They are part. This is the only ruler party. So they believe in what? Atheism. <laughs> No God, and there is no life after death. Is it allowed for a Chinese political person in the party who's ruling China to marry a believer Muslim? No, it's impossible. Subhanallah. Tabira Tfadl, yalla, I'm discussing you with your own. She's not allowed. We say, but this is, you know, this is politics. Yeah, Ammi, okay. In, in our Islam, this is politics. Khalasa, <laughs> shukran. This is our politics. Our politics, not to allow a Muslim to marry, but from a Muslim and a Christian and a girl. What was the point, Yani? This is applicable wherever you go. Everyone does it. Tab, look to the surprise. Of a riwaya, surprise. Okay? Now, is this an Islamic religious thing? No. It is a hukum as well in Judaism and Christianity. Do you know this? Do you know this? Religious Jews and Christians, they are not allowed to marry from people outside their religion. <laughs> ah, so please be aware not to fall in the trap of inferiority complex. I will read to you very quickly from Deuteronomy, which is Sifr Tathmiya. Deuteronomy 7, uh, you know, the, the ch chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. But to understand the context, I will read from one and two, just to put you in the context of the pronouns. And what we need is three and four verses. From the Old Testament, which is the first part of the Christian Bible. When the Lord, your Lord, brings you into the land, you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, the Girgashtis, or I don't know how to say them, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hevetites, and Jubicites, seven nations larger and strong, stronger than you. And when your Lord, your God, has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. Now, do not intermarry with them. <laughs> you know, the Bible mentioned seven nations. They were surrounding them by names. The Canaanites, the Amorites, the, you know, which is all of them, they were polytheists. Polytheists like the people of Mecca, exactly for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. Exactly what we have in chapter Al-Baqarah. Exactly. This, this is for the dedicated religious Jews and Christians. Don't tell me, look, I, I have my Christian friend who does not care. He's not Christian. <laughs> it's like secular Muslim 
who does not care with anything of Islam. He has just the name of Islam. He's not representing Islam. He's not practicing Islam. The same thing, Jews, they have their liberal, uh, secular, and Christians they have. I'm talking about dedicated religious people who follow the scripture, like us, who practicing their religion. If you are a Jew or a Christian practicing your religion, it's prohibited for you to marry from outside your religion, which is something I'm not discussing right and wrong. I'm discussing this is a reality, okay? For, because for us, the right and wrong, we discuss this. We don't decide according to our feelings or according to the society or the voting system. The decision will be taken according to Allah. If Allah decided that this is mercy, permissible, we will consider it right. Because Allah permitted it. If Allah prohibited it, we consider haram and it's wrong. Has nothing to do with our feelings or the society or the development of the society or the voting system. That's why be careful. This is very important because we are living in a, in a secular so-called democratic. Democratic means voting. The majority of us, we don't know behind the scene what happens to influence the majority. <laughs> That's why, for example, in, in, in a democratic, for example, mentality, by voting, all kind of what we believe is haram will be permissible. So therefore, for us, in Islam, the shara' will decide what's halal and haram. And we have just to find the possible tools and ways to apply them when we are living, okay? So depending on that, I don't care what others think. Why, why, why? This is my faith, my culture, my system. I'm just telling you. And I have this justification. I have already given it to you. In, polit in politics, in common sense. Russians and Americans, Chinese or something, if you want. But some people, they will come just to you and you Islam, you Muslim, you Islam. What can I do for you? Everyone does it. But for you as a Muslim, be aware that Allah decided so. And we have a justification. We want to protect our identity. Very simple. <laughs> Very simple. Can you imagine you are practicing Muslim if you are allowed to marry an atheist? But Sheikh, what if she might become a Muslim 20 years later? Okay, I don't know Ilm al-Ghayb and this is not my problem. <laughs> I'm just dealing with the factual reality that I'm facing now. If I'm a practicing Muslim, common sense, I'm supposed to do my best to let my kids be what? Muslims, respecting their Allah. But if I'm allowed to marry an atheist, because she's nice, okay, she's nice. She's nice, queen of beauty. But she denies the Akhirah. Just denies the Akhirah. <laughs> and she was taking care of my kids. She raised them up to deny completely the Akhirah. Naam. Naam, Habib Ummak. Can you imagine what kind of Muslim society will be? What's this? And by the way, every society, by the way, now in Canada, what do you say? We have Canadian values, even though, even though, I have not seen that even one person who can tell me exactly what Canadian values are. But I always say, okay, we believe in Canadian values. Type. Canadian values indicates a set of rules and teaching and things and principles people must adhere to, true or false. But if you are a proud Canadian, are you ready to marry someone who hates Canadian values? Regardless what Canadian values are. No, seriously, because Canada contains, I think, 150. Canada, يعني, one of يعني, the things that most of the people they keep repeating that Canada is like a, not unlike United States by the way they, they, they celebrate differences which means they welcome you with, with the distinguished identity of your culture which means you are proud to be Indian you are proud to be an Arab a Muslim you are proud to be a Christian Arab you are proud to be uh, Indian Muslim, you are proud to be Hindu Muslim. They don't say, no, 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 you have all to be, no, 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 no. So enjoy your own within. Well, I think this is something compared to the United States, something unique. But regardless, I'm just giving an, an example. Someone who believes in Canadian values, 
if she or he wants to marry from someone who rejects completely Canadian values, will not be acceptable. That's it. So in light of this, let's read the ayah again very quickly. وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يؤمن. Do not marry polytheist women until they believe. So Alhamdulillah, by the way, we are not racists. We are people of principles. Because this polytheist, if now she decided to become a Muslim, in the next five minutes she might be the best in this place. <laughs> what? Yes. And this is the beauty of Islam, by the way. The beauty of Islam, we don't, by the way, in Islam, unlike some major religions, they are based on racism. If you are not born from the lineage of a certain things, you can't be, you know, following this religion type. Some other religions, they have the hierarchy system. You can't be a religious person until you go to the church or the temple or you will be ordained by the priest and the church and something. In Islam, no one can stop you from being a Muslim, even if they're against you. So let's compare how easy to become a Muslim compared with so-called liberalism and democracies, if you want to accept them. I love American values. I accepted American culture. Do they give me nationality? Seriously, well, I'm asking seriously. If I believe in American culture and I respect American values and all the time I'm defending American values and faith and culture, by default, am I eligible to have American citizenship? Seriously, I'm asking. No. No. <laughs> Time. If you love Allah and you accept Prophet Muhammad as a prophet and you sit alone in a cave in the middle of the desert, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Have you become a Muslim? Type. What if we don't want you to become a Muslim? Huh? We can't do nothing. We can't stop you from being a Muslim. You will be a Muslim. You will, have, you will be enjoying all rights of Islam, whether I loved or not. <laughs> Subhanallah. I'm giving you a criterion to know whether Islam is racist or not. <laughs> Those who believe in the so-called civil society will not accept you unless you proved with tens of conditions that could take all of your life and you will not be able to achieve them. While Islam accept you with their own, even if all Muslims don't want you to become Muslim. You can become Muslim. <laughs> Type, hierarchy system, position. If you are dedicated to Islam and you decided to recite and to, to do Hifz the Quran, you will be an Imam. <laughs> Whether I love or not. No one can stop you. If you, have a, if you are mastering the skills of Tajweed, you have a nice voice, you embrace the Quran, and you are just 15, I'm 50 plus, I don't read the Quran like you. You have the priority upon me to lead me in prayer. Who is the racist? Who is? Sheikh, definitely Muslims. Yes, we all know that, uh, you know, Muslims are racists. Because of ignorance, you say these things. Anyway, I hope that, uh, inshallah, uh, now I finished, khalas. Today, uh, Inshallah, but just to pay your attention next time, you know, it's the, the, the winter time will be. So, Isha, the Iqlam of the Isha will be 7.15. So, be, <laughs> be careful. We will pray. Uh, we will start our session around 7.15. Sorry, 7.30. Be the Mullah Azza wa Jal. The Isha prayer. Sah Abu Farooq? 7.15. The Isha, sah? Inshallah, 7.15. 7.15. Khalas, tamam, inshallah. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Salam kathir. Rizakum Allah khairan. دخلت فكرتك سرحت ابو هذاك الباب صدقني